The day he was shot, his whole family was in this house. We didn't know, obviously. I know where he was going. At that time, I was like scared because I did, I know he was uh, in a place that was obviously that was dangerous. But it is difficult to say that he was shot. <laughs> it's like two months ago he was shot, but uh, till now, whenever I say "goli lagi," it's difficult. <laughs> Luckily, I was out patrolling on that day. When the call came, we did not know that there were injuries and you know there was a death also. Many injured were just laying at this place and we managed to get all of the injured and inside this APC. Actually, this was the APC that we were in on that day. And uh, this back side of the APC, this was the place where we uh, just made the injured civilian sit. This center place was the place where our brother, Sipai Tarek, we had just made him sit because uh, at that moment, we still thought that we could save him. He called me and he told me uh, what happened, that uh, people got injured. One of the, uh, one of the soldier lost his life and one was shot in the abdomen, one was shot in the leg. But uh, I, I didn't know the one who was injured, who got shot in the abdomen. When we put all of the injured in the back, civilians and military personnel alike, I told my uh, the driver of the vehicle because the fire was coming. There was a lot of uh, gunshots, so uh, I told my driver to just move out of the danger zone. So let's just move out, and we'll sort out the uh, uh, inside spacing aspect later. As the APC driver was taking the APC out of the danger zone, and I was running just aside the APC. So as I was running, I got two bullets from the direction in which I was running. So one bullet was stopped by this flag jacket that I'm wearing and the other bullet just went through me. The first thing he said was, Mama ko na pata na, ammi ko na pata chale. Uh, not just ammi ko na pata chale, ghar mein kisi ko bhi na pata chale. So th that was difficult for uh, me because I wanted to talk to people. I wanted to tell his sisters, his mother, his brother. I started crying. So, um, I avoided, in that time, I avoided talking to anyone. I was taken first to Indian headquarters where I was given first aid and then I was flown to level 2 hospital which was run by Ghana and for there I was given uh, treatment. Okay. Okay. Uh, so that, it was like the size of a fist. So, it was a unique one. I'm happy that when we explained to him, that from the beginning, that it's going to be a very long journey. We may take a lot of time to get there. He's here. How are you? I spent nearly two months in treatment, and uh, the two months were quite long and difficult. And during my uh, my time over there, during my treatment, and the biggest motivating factor for me was my family. You know, every day lying there in the hospital, I was thinking about my family. That how am I going to? greet them at the airport, how am I going to see my daughter, see my wife, see my mother, all of my family members. And now that I'm here, uh, with my family, with my daughter, with my wife, my mother, everyone, so every day is a blessing, every day is a bonus. And considering the fact that I have to go back after one and a half months, two months, I'm really excited. Uh, to be very honest because you know I'm going to a place where all of this happened and to see that place after the storm after everything has passed at the place where so many people lost their lives I got injured my fellow peacekeeper lost his life the biggest driving factor for me would be to complete the mission with the people that uh, you know always have my back